This recording will demonstrate the main items in financial statements, the structure of financial statements and how the statements are related to each other. General purpose financial reports are made up of four separate statements. These are the statement of financial position, commonly referred to as the balance sheet, the profit and loss statement, also commonly referred to as the income statement, the statement of changes in equity and the cash flow statement. I'm going to demonstrate these statements by creating a small business. How about we choose something familiar like a small coffee shop? What do we need to start up our business? Some cash would be handy. Let's say we have $500 cash. What else do we need? Some coffee and other supplies like milk, sugar and takeaway cups and spoons. We could ask a supplier to provide these to us on credit, which means they'll give the goods to us now and we have an arrangement that we'll pay them later. We also need a machine to make the cups of coffee. We could purchase that on credit as well and agree to pay for it next month. Some furniture would be good. Some tables and chairs for the customers to sit around while they enjoy our coffee. Luckily, we personally own some furniture we can use. Lastly, we need a property to run our shop from. Let's say we buy a property for $100,000. We don't have $100,000. Let's say we've got $20,000 to cover the deposit, so we get a bank loan for the remaining $80,000. The next question then is, how do we finance that, what we have? We've partly answered that already, but let's write it down. The money we owe the suppliers for the coffee and supplies and the coffee machine is $1,500. We call these accounts payable. We got a bank loan to help pay for the property for $80,000. That's the amount we need to pay back to the bank. Loans for property are usually paid back over a long period of time or a few years. These are amounts we owe to an external party. In addition, we have the amounts we contributed ourselves. We contributed the $500 cash, $1,500 worth of furniture, and the property deposit of $20,000, making our contribution $22,000. What we have are what we call assets. These are items that will generate future economic benefits. We will use them to generate our income. We have total assets of $103,500. On the other side, the items that we've got an obligation to pay back to an external party are called liabilities. We have total liabilities of $81,500. What we've contributed ourselves is called equity. This is our equity or value in the business. If we were to sell our assets and pay off our liabilities, then the equity is what we have left for ourselves. The total liabilities plus equity is 103,500, which equals our total assets. What we have just created is the balance sheet for our coffee shop. All statements must have a heading, otherwise they are meaningless. It must include the name of the business, the type of statement and the date. In this case, it is as at a particular date because it shows the position of our business on this day. It is a snapshot in time. Tomorrow we may have sold some coffee, so our financial position changes as we'll have more cash and less coffee. Looking at our balance sheet, on the left side, we've got what we have. On the right side, how we finance those items. We can divide this up into three sections. The assets, which equal the liabilities plus the equity. This is the accounting equation, the most important equation you'll learn in accounting as it underpins the whole recording process. You shouldn't just remember this, but hopefully having looked at it in this way, you can now understand why assets equals liabilities plus equity. Let's assume now that we've been operating our business and selling coffee for one week. We have income from coffee sales. We call this sales revenue. We'll assume we had $2,000 in sales. To enable us to generate that income, we had some expenses. The cost of the coffee and supplies that we used up, $100. We pay someone to help in the shop, $200.
we used $50 worth of electricity, which we haven't paid for yet, but it's still counted as an expense because we've used it and we owe $50 interest on our bank loan. Our total expenses are $400. The difference between our income and expenses is profit. In this case, we made a profit of $1,600. What we've just created is the second of our financial statements. This is the profit or loss statement. Again, the heading is important. Make sure you have the name of the business, the name of the statement, and in this case, the time period for the week ending because it shows us all of the income and expenses that were incurred during that time. Income less expenses equals profit or loss if the expenses exceed the income. We can now create a statement of changes in equity. Equity is increased by profit and decreased by loss and withdrawals of equity. Any statement that shows changes will have a beginning, any additions and deductions, and an ending figure. Our beginning equity was $22,000. We remember this from our balance sheet we constructed at the start of the week. Profit increases equity, and we just calculated that we have $1,600 in profit. Let's also assume that we took $200 out of the business for our own personal use. This is called drawings. It's not an expense, but rather a withdrawal of our equity or a withdrawal in anticipation of profits. This leaves us with an ending equity of $23,400. Notice that this statement is labeled for the week ending because it shows changes over a period of time. The fourth and last financial statement is a cash flow statement. It also shows changes over a period of time, so it's labelled for the week ending. The cash flow statement shows the cash inflows and outflows for three different types of activities, operations, investing and financing. I will talk about what these are in more detail in another recording just on cash flows. In this example, we have cash flows from our customers Assuming that all the coffees sold were for cash, then we have cash receipts from customers at $2,000. We also had some cash outflows. Did we pay for the coffee that was sold? No, we didn't, as we already had that at the commencement of our business. We did, however, pay $200 for wages. The electricity and bank interest expenses have not been paid for yet, so there is no cash outflow for them. Our total cash inflow from our operating activities is $1,800. Investing activities relates to investments in property, plant and equipment. Let's say we purchased a refrigerator for $700 and we paid cash for it. In that case, we have cash outflows of $700 in this section. Lastly, financing activities relate to anything to do with financing the business. So capital contributions and drawings or if it was a company issuing shares and dividends. In our case, we had a cash outflow of $200 because we withdrew this for ourselves. By adding together the separate cash flows, we get a net cash inflow for the week of $900. We can add this to our beginning cash of $500. That's from our initial balance sheet we created when we started the business. And from that, we can calculate we must have $1,400 cash at the end of the period. What we should do now is create a new balance sheet for the 31st of March. This is at the end of the week, so it'll be different to the one we made at the start of the week as our financial position has changed. We now have $1,400 in cash, which we calculated on the cash flow statement. We previously had $500 worth of coffee and other supplies, and we used $100 worth. Remember that was expense on the profit and loss statement. So we now have $400 worth left in stock. We still have our coffee machine and furniture that hasn't changed. But we have an additional asset, the refrigerator that we purchased. Remember I mentioned that when we prepared the cash flow statement. And our re property remains the same. So now total assets are 105000 they have increased overall by 1,500. Our liabilities have increased as well. Previously, we had 
$1,500 and we need to add to that the $50 owing for the electricity. We also have the $50 that we owe for the bank interest. We'll put that down as interest payable. The bank loan remains unchanged, giving us total liabilities of $81,600. In the equity section, the owner's capital is now $23,400. We calculated this in the statement of changes in equity, the beginning equity plus the profit less the drawings. So total liabilities in equity is the same as total assets, which is what we expect. Lastly, let's look at how the financial statements link together. The profit in the profit and loss statement links to the changes in equity statement. The ending equity in the changes in equity statement links to the equity section in the balance sheet. And the cash at the end of the period in the cash flow statement is the cash we have in the balance sheet for that day. So all of our statements link together and together they tell the story of the financial position and performance 